Hi, I'm Caitlin E and welcome or welcome back to the Lit Review. Today we're doing my favorite thing, which is Litland. This is my TBR game. Uh, if you have never seen any of this gameplay action before, I will link up in the cards and down in the playlist below. But this is how I pick my to be read pile every month. Because you can see, I have a lot of stuff behind me uh, and sometimes I get really distracted. So each of these colors corresponds to a genre which we will pull together. This originally was inspired uh, by Candyland, but there's a lot of things that we've introduced uh, since here to kind of keep it unique, keep it fresh. If you would like to see the most current rules for Litland, they will also be in the description box below. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about how I did in February. Uh, the answer is not well. I continued my reading slump into February. Uh, I only read four books, but of those four books, only two of them had anything to do with my official TBR. So the two books that I did finish are uh, Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian, which is a good thing because this is one of the ones that what put me in jeopardy for a, uh, a punishment this time. So saved myself here. And then I also read Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley, which was part of my February pick. So that's great. Uh, but that's where the good news ends, friends. Let's talk about all the things I didn't read and whether or not that gets me into any trouble. The two books <laughs> that I was, I desperately needed to finish in February were The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. I have made more progress on it. I do want to continue reading this book, but I'm just realizing that for me, uh, this is something I read a chapter of occasionally and like slowly get through it rather than making it a one and done kind of thing. So this puts me in jeopardy of taking a punishment because I needed to finish this and I did not. The other one that is in that same category is I didn't finish it, but I kind of needed to if I wanted to avoid a punishment was A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsk. So I did start this. I am like maybe, maybe a quarter of the way in and my intent is to continue this though it may be deprioritized as I have other things that need to get finished on my TBR. So these two put me up for potentially two punishments. However, for the first time ever, this is relevant, uh, I also completed our monthly troll together. So the monthly troll for February was to take a photo shoot of, of something. It could be anything really of your choice. I went bookish because you know, hi, hello, of course I did. And I actually did a really a uh, fun photo shoot with uh, Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. So you can watch that video. I did a little behind the scenes video of that. I'll link that in the cards as well. So I can save myself from one punishment. I can't save myself from both, but I can save myself from one, which means we will have to do a pu one punishment pick uh, for here in March, but I was at least able to save myself from doing two, which is great. Uh, now let's talk about how much progress I made on some of the other books on my TBR. Uh, and these will all roll over into March. I have one more chance to try to get them good uh, and finished, but they will all put me in jeopardy of a punishment if I do not finish them in March. So yay. There are two that I made progress on but did not finish, and these are my two hopefuls, uh, the ones that I'm most, most convinced I can at least get through, uh, and that is I started uh, the Light We Carry by Michelle Obama. I've been listening to this one via audiobook and I'm about a third of the way through it. Even though I own it in physical, I really love the audiobook of this. So I'm actually pretty confident I can finish this one, but this will roll over into March. And then the other one that I made some progress on but did not finish is uh, which is Steeped in Gold by CNN Smart. You can kind of see it. It's not on the cover. The cover is really pretty and shiny, but it's it, the cover is, does not have the title. Made some additional progress, but not as much as I would have liked. I also had two books that I did not crack the spines on at all. And if I don't finish them, they'll definitely uh, put me up for a punishment, which would suck <laughs> because I only take four pulls a month. And so far we're, we're in real, real danger here. Uh, but that is Yesterday's History by Kasoko Jackson and Mr. Fox by Helen Oyemi. So these two, I definitely need to finish alongside the other two I just mentioned if I want to avoid a punishment altogether. Now, I will also be doing another monthly troll pick so I can potentially save myself from at least one punishment like I did this month. You'll have to wait to the end to see what it is we're doing together. So now let's talk about the stuff that I'm trying to accomplish this month, like what challenges I'm partaking in and, and the like. So for my book club, the book covered book club, uh, I will be trying to fit in a book with color blocking. 
Um, actually, here's the one I'm going to try to get through. I will be doing a separate video with recommendations for both March and April. That should be coming in the next week or so. Uh, but this is a good example of what color blocking can look like. So the idea that these blue and red graphic spaces, um, like color blocking, is a good example of this. This is an option, like, if I if I pull a romance, this is going to be my move. Litland has also been really into nonfiction lately. So uh, my backup pick for this in case that happens, is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, because that one also has like really graphic uses of color blocking and, and like yellow and pink. I'll put a picture up on the screen. But these are my two options for that prompt. And then Kayla from Books and Lala obviously runs the Buzzwordathon, uh, and the Buzzwordathon prompt for March is character names. So, oh gosh, I didn't bring it in here with me. But my goal for that is to read Gideon the Ninth, because my friend Nikki loves that book and has been trying to get me to read it for a very long time. And I am a questionable friend who is bad at following up on the recommendations of my friends. So that is the one I will try my darndest to get to in March for that prompt. And then my friend Kim from Expedition Through Pages uh, and her mom, Julie, are running a TBR Trails The Battles, and I am on Julie's team. I am on Team A. So we have some stuff that we're going to try to accomplish this month. As it stands, I am filming this on like March 3rd. I have already read the group book. Now we, now we are six by A.A. Milne, which is a poetry book. So, hey, look at me. I've already checked something off on that box. I feel very, very good about it. But I do also need to try to get in like an award-winning book. And then there's a, a, like a social media element. I think like the first thing I can get from a social media poll is like maybe an additional challenge. I'll have to look into how that works. That's some of the stuff I'm trying to get done this month in March. Sounds like a lot, right? Sounds really scary for somebody who's in a reading slump. Why do I do this to myself every time? But enough of that. Let me start doing the board footage and we'll see how, how far we can get this month in Lootland. Poll number one. Okay, we got a little bit of a glare here from the light, so apologies for that, but that does say nonfiction. If this is your first time, let me give you a rough tour of the board. Uh, over here, we have our shuffled deck where we'll be pulling from. This is the stuff that we have already accomplished to get us to where Wilbur is currently at. That is Wilbur. He is our little friend. And here's what we had to go through uh, last week. I'm just making a mess of it. Uh, not last week, last month. That is also the troll pick that we had to do. Let me clean this up real quick. Uh, and then we have these cards over here. We will be pulling the monthly troll uh, at the very end. It is also relevant if we land on any of these like little rainbow stickers or if we had needed to cross a bridge. We're definitely gonna be pulling one of these at the tail end. I think I'm gonna do it a little differently and do this as my last pull so we can do board progression first. Uh, the only other way that would be relevant is if we needed to land on one of these things. So if we pulled something with this symbol on them, it would take us back to whatever uh, area on the map and we would have to try to complete that challenge. Ooh. Uh, it's been it's been a rough uh, time without one red, which is my romance category. And I already mentioned this, but that means I'm definitely going to pick up Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall because this fits my prompt for color blocking and I really want to read more Alexis Hall. It features one of my all-time favorite tropes, which is fake dating. And in this case, we have a like a Nepo baby, essentially, <laughs> a, uh, a rock star's son named Luke O'Donnell. And he is like kind of tangentially famous because of his rock star father and his bad boy ways. When Luke kind of puts some of his father's grand return at risk by having like a compromising photo, he needs to like clean up his image fast. And that's when we find Oliver Blackwood, who's like a very like put together proper barrister, I believe. Yeah. And an ethical vegetarian. So, you know, he's, he's like a gold star human being. And why Oliver cares is Oliver needs a date to a big public event to make him look good at work. So that's the natural setup for fake dating is they both need each other for nebulous and sometimes very silly reasons, but they're gonna fall in love. And that's really what I'm here for. So this looks super cute. The last Alexis Hall I read, A Lady for a Duke, uh, was one of my favorite books of last year. So I am very optimistic. And even though it's a little bit of a thicker romance novel, I'm very excited to put this on my TBR for March. Poll number two. 
Oh. Cool. Let me put this here, up here. All right, friend, so that's romance, historical, nonfiction. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so we need to go here. Boop. It's a sad boop. This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> so we were making such good progress across the board in Litland, and then we get sent back, we get ported back uh, by this little pink square uh, that I have upside down, which you can't even read. I don't know why I'm doing this. Uh, it is my fantasy and sci-fi uh, square, so that means we are going to have to go all the way back on the board to fantasy and sci-fi. This is actually pretty doable, I think, all things considered. Uh, so I pulled this, and that is a subscription box pick. This does mean I was gonna see if I could get Gideon the Ninth in here, but that is not a subscription box. Let me see if there's still any other thing I can find that would help me with the buzzwordathon prompt that does come from a subscription box. <sighs> I'm gonna need a minute. Okay, okay, all right. I figured my life out a little bit. I was able to find a fantasy sci-fi subscription box pick. And that is this one. This is uh, Zara by S.J. Jones. Uh, it's part of the Guardians of the Dawn series. And I believe this was an Illumicrate pick from last year. So stunning cover. Love this. Gorgeous spine. You know, I got to do this when I have Illumicrate. So I just got to give you the tour. Uh, so like really pretty patterned in pages. Oh, wow. And then on the inside is this much more like interesting graphic that says uh, the maiden who was loved by death, which maybe makes me even more excited for this book, if I'm being honest. Um, I have questions. Let's see if the inside dust jacket can answer them. So the first thing I'm learning from the inside dust jacket is that magic is bad in this fantasy world. Magic and by extension, magicians uh, are called abominations throughout what's uh, the world of this book called the Morning Realms. And the why of it is that they're blamed for a literal plague of monsters that uh, like just basically just ruined everything 20 years ago. So that's the world we're in right now. And of course, that means that our heroine is probably a magician, right? Jin Zara has enough to worry about. She's got an angry stepmother. She has a blind younger sister that she's trying to take care of. And here it is. She's trying to hide her magical gifts. That tracks. Uh, so there's rumors of monsters re-emerging from the marsh nearby. And she ends up having a chance encounter with a young man named Han. Uh, and so she ends up meeting Han and he's part of this like secret magical resistance called the Guardians of the Dawn. And she realizes that there might be more to these rumors than she thought. So I won't go too far because I do think dust jackets tend to try to give too much away, but that's enough for me to be intrigued. So we'll be adding this as our boot back challenge, which is, you know, not really this book's fault. We won't hold it against it, but I will be reading this in March. All right, so our third and final poll. Mm, okay, that makes for that. Uh... All right, so if I go this way, I'm gonna be another stuck square and I really don't wanna have to do that. So I think we're going here, friends. Boop. We took a bit of a trip. We were up here and now we're down here. So good times. All right, that right, that is easy. One yellow is one young adult. Oh gosh, there's so many ways I could go with this. Um, you know what? It's been a rough month. It's been a weird month. I'm in a reading slump. I'm going to choose something that feels like a bit of a win uh, because I have so much to accomplish. I really just want something nice and easy. So this would be a reread for me, but I do think it's worth rereading. And that is the first book in the Princess Diaries series by Meg Cabot. I don't know. I've just been hankering for some nostalgia lately. It's small. If you have never heard of this, this was a huge YA series when I was in fact a young adult. And this is the story of Mia Thermopolis told by her own diary entries. And Mia thinks she's just a regular girl, 
But no, she's not. She's a princess of Genovia. This is the basis for me being an epistolary book reader, like a novel who loves things told by email, email, by diary, by podcast. Like, give this to me. This is kind of like where it started. So I'm very happy to be able to reread this. We will see how it aged. I don't know if it aged well. Okay, so I do still need to do a punishment pick. So I'm just gonna do that with you right here, right now. Uh, that means we're only doing the three pulls. Uh, so here's my, my punishment and my stuck square cards. You guys can see it first. Maybe, maybe it'll focus. There we go. Oh, what does that say? A small channel recommends. Actually, okay, so I always like to say that my punishment or stuck square picks are not actually punishing. They're just like they take a little bit more, a little bit more juice, a little bit more thought, but this is actually a great pick. I love lifting up small channels because I myself am a small channel. So let's see what's on my watch later uh, tab on YouTube together. And I'll just do like, oh, oh, um, this will work for that thing I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. Um, I have to do a social media scroll for Expedition Through Pages. Can, oh, this is great. This is actually not a punishment at all. This is great news. Okay, huzzah. Watch later videos. And the first one I found is uh, Coffee Over Apples. This is Stephanie's channel. And she does a really also amazing TBR game where uh, she picks her TBR uh, using Magic the Gathering. You go check her channel out. I will link in the cards and down below as per usual. But let's watch this together and see if there are any books that we have in common. And if not, I'll just find another small channel to rep and support. Holy shit. This has been a journey. Okay, so I actually turned my camera off and stopped recording because it was taking so long for me to find something, which is actually a credit to the small channels that I follow and the immense diversity that they bring into my life. So first I went to Steph Coffee over Apples uh, and I had like their TBR sounded fantastic, but I didn't have any of their books. <laughs> uh, and then I went to Kim at Whimsical Narratives, who I will also link below uh, because Kim has a very darling TBR game that is like the TBR Cafe. And once again, a dynamic and lovely TBR, but nothing that I owned. So then I went <laughs> to Brittany at Rescues and Reads who also has a TBR game and pulls from a challenge cup. And I made it like almost eight minutes into the video before I got finally a book that I own. So thank you to all three of those lovely small channels. I hope you go check them out and check out their TBR games. Uh, I love a good TBR game, obviously, since that's what, you know, we're here to do. In her uh, March 2024 TBR uh, video on Rescues and Reads, we have a winner. The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. So I will have to uh, try to read The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn as my punishment pick. I do generally like Kate Quinn, so I don't think this is a bad thing at all. And if I read this, hopefully this will help satisfy uh, my Expedition Through Pages prompt too. But let me tell you a little bit about what this book is all about. So this is a historical fiction book set in 1937 where our main female character named Mila is a bookish individual, but with Hitler's invasion of the Ukraine and Russia is kind of called to action to become a sniper in order to save herself, her family, and her homeland. So she becomes who, it becomes known as the Lady Death and is just a very like, profound sniper. So she's so terrifyingly good at her job that um, when news of her 300th kill makes her a national heroine, Mila is torn from the bloody battlefields of the Eastern Front and sent to America on a Goodwill tour. She ends up striking up an unlikely friendship with the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt uh, and an even more unexpected connection with a silent fellow sniper. But then there's an old enemy from her past that emerges. So it's like historical war torn intrigue which i think is kind of what kate quinn does best so i am excited to give this a go this will be my punishment pick but this doesn't really feel like a punishment so thank you very much Brittany, and thank you to kim and steph for also like 
given me a lot of inspo and a lot of things to add to my virtual TBR, uh, but this is what will actually go on my physical TBR for March. The four books that have been added to my TBR for March, that is my March TBR, is uh, Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall, Zara by S.J. Jones, uh, The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot, and The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. This will, of course, not be it. It is joined by my four other books that I mentioned at the start, uh, that I have set down and you know, I'm not going to pick it back up again, but I actually have eight books that I'm trying to read in this month, plus some books that I couldn't quite squeeze into my TBR, like Gideon the Ninth. So it's a hefty month. No one is surprised by this. However, we're not done yet either. I have to pull a Trollbridge pick with you all. So let me do that real quick. Uh, so if this is your first time here, we do the uh, monthly troll where I use my Trollbridge cards. Uh, Look how cute they are to pull something that we can all do together. And the idea is that it's a fun thing for us to do that hopefully can inspire you and you can bring some of the Litland energy into your monthly reading. Uh, if you can accomplish it, cool. It's just a thing that we can do together. If not, no worries. But if I complete it successfully, that means that I can save myself from a punishment this month or next month, which as we all now know, I desperately need to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna try my darndest to complete whatever this is. And this little deck is full of not just book type prompts, but also like things I could do. So it could end up being not a book, which frankly I hope for because I don't wanna add another book to this TBR. <laughs> so let's see. Um, okay. Oh, all right, that does look like it's gonna be a book. What are you? Author starts with a vowel. Ah, that is in fact another book that we'll be adding to the TBR. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so after much debate, uh, I'm gonna just double whammy myself with an author that has, uh, that starts with a vowel in both their first name and their last name, just so that there's no confusion. But feel free to interpret this prompt how you choose, and you can choose either the first name or the author's last name. But I'm gonna read uh, With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, because one, I really like Elizabeth Acevedo, and you know, her name definitely starts with two different vowels. This, I believe, is a YA pick, and it's also truly like one of the most beautiful like her books are stunning. Her books are always so stunning. The Naked Hardback is gorgeous. But let's talk about what this book is actually about. Our main character here is uh, Imani Santiago and she got pregnant when she was in high school and has been kind of trying to make it work ever since to take care of her kid, to take care of her abuela. Uh, and one of the places that she can like be herself and let go is in the kitchen. Uh, she does things like listen to her intuition and adding a little and a little something magical every time. So it sounds like there might even be some magical realism in here. I don't know for sure. So even though she's always dreamed of working in a kitchen, she knows that that's not worth her time to pursue. Like she doesn't want to waste her time yet, despite the rules that she's made for her life and everyone else's rules, which she refuses to play by. Uh, once Amani starts cooking, her only choice is to let her talent break free. This sounds like really wholesome and inspiring read like learning to like trust yourself trust your instincts and i just i've always really loved elizabeth acevedo i've only read one other book from her but she comes at things with such a unique approach and also has such poetic dynamic language so this is actually a great a great pick i think to add to the tbr Whew. all right so that's a lot but we're gonna get through it or at least as much of it as we can and we'll see how much i can get done uh, on the other side of march wish me luck uh, if you are going to participate in the monthly troll, let me know down in the comments below what author with a vowel you'll be picking up this month. Uh, and I hope you get to it as well. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope you have a fantastic reading day or night, depending on when you see this video. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hold on girl, now wait just a minute. I've got something to say. You should hear it. Oh. I'm happy to make time